So we have two strategies then here for packing the logic associated with, with uh, conjunctions. One with an adverb phrase, the other with a causal verb. Now we'd like to expand our map of this relationship between climate and grasses. So can you think of any versions of this claim that pack information more densely than two, but uh, less densely than four? So we show the beginning of one possible clause here. So how bunch grasses grow. Could you try to complete this packing? And you might want to pause the video here. Okay, this is uh, one possible way of completing this. Uh, so how bunch grasses grow is affected by seasonal changes in moisture. So we've seen in this case the example of packing a logical relationship into the verb and the uh, rest of the meanings into another noun group, seasonal changes in moisture. You might have noticed then that how bunch grasses grow is actually a clause. All right, so this is quite interesting. We've uh, learned that a clause is an expression that has contains a verb, but this clause is embedded within a noun group. So we have the uh, details and the dynamism associated with the the verb grow, for example, but we have it packed into a noun group. And of course, the job of a noun group is to represent a thing. By using what we call these embedded clauses, we can balance concrete and abstract expression. Okay, moving to task 10, we've seen that uh, sentences 3 and 4 mean similar things, but they are different. We'd like you to try to use some of the vocabulary you've seen in this video tutorial so far to describe the differences between sentences three and four in terms of abstraction and technicality. Please pause the video here. And here we have the answers. Please review the answers and compare it with your own. Pause the video here. All right, some more vocabulary. Besides the differences in degree of packing and abstraction, uh, three and four also differ in logical order. You might have noticed this yourself. Um, and also in terms of grammatical voice, which uh, a lot of students uh, are aware of as well. You might want to pause the video here, read this over. And there's one more piece of vocabulary that it's important uh, to use in looking at this variation, and that's given a new information order. Please pause the video here and read this over. What's so central about given a new information order is that it's focused on the reader, what the reader already knows. So for sentence three, for example, the reader might be thinking, oh, I recognize the idea how bunch grasses grow. Tell me something new about that. In contrast, uh, in sentence four, the reader will recognize climate, but want new information about climate. It will be useful to look at this notion of given a new information pattern in a longer text. And let's look at how new information becomes given information. We have here a definition of learning games, which is a fairly typical piece of academic writing. Let's read it together. Game can be defined as a system in which players engage in an abstract challenge defined by rules, interactivity, and feedback that results in a quantifiable outcome, often eliciting an emotional reaction. While this definition is helpful from a broad perspective, it provides no guidance into the various types of games that can be used to achieve learning goals. A more precise breakdown is needed. However, breaking down games is not a simple task. Games are varied and nuanced. So in this academic text, we have in the title the notion of game being introduced. and we have then in the first sentence, in the given information slot, the word game starts off the first sentence. 
the new information associated with game is its definition defined as is introduced as new information and this is reintroduced then in the next clause as given information so the reader already is aware of the definition and we notice the grammatical packing that happens where a verb is packed into a noun here the definition is again treated as given information we can now call it it because we know what it refers to it's the definition and then the new information associated with it is the various types of game the classification of game or in other words as we see in the next sentence the breakdown of games we have here then another packing of the new information into the given information slot because the reader is now aware of this idea of breaking down games breakdown is again repeated in the next clause and the notion of game is reintroduced towards the end of the paragraph here we see then again how new information is later treated as given information and this produces flow we've also seen how grammatical packing is involved in packing new information as given okay let's look in terms of flow so please read the following. Tell us what's wrong with this version of the climate text. Perhaps you agree that the individual sentences are fine and all the information from the original paragraph, which you may recall, is in this version, but somehow the sentences do not flow well. Why? Pause the video here. Okay, the answer is that in this version, the information in sentences two, three, and four is in the wrong order. Pause the video here. We'll read this over, please. We see that putting this in the original order, the first topic sentence introduces plants, right, as new information. And then the idea of plant is picked up because it's already known. So it's in the given or known position of those clauses. And this shows how we often build new information, which is this information here, from known information for our readers. Okay, for task 12, what are some key differences between sentences 3 and 4 in terms of given and new information order? Answer in your own words. Pause the video here. And here are the answers. Again, please pause the video and compare with your own answers. All right, recall that the climate text comes from a grade seven science textbook. What language clues suggest that this is an introductory science text? Pause the video here. Okay, you might have noticed that the text is not very detailed and it doesn't have very specialized information except perhaps for abiotic parts of the environment the information presented is quite basic the evidence it presents for the claim that climate affects plant growth is basic easy to grasp from general experience for a piece of science writing there is a large amount of concrete wording including two embedded clauses uh, how the abiotic parts of an environment affect living things such as plants and where and how plants live. And although there are a few long noun groups with pre and post modification, these noun groups are not highly complex. The reason we point this out now is that for higher levels of academic exchange, we need to be able to pack more information. Moving on to task 14, revise the meanings in sentence four into a single noun group. This degree of packing is more typical in university and research writing. Pause the video here. Okay, and the answer to task 14, you see in a single noun group, we have the effects of climate on the seasonal growth of plants. This absorbs the meaning climate affects the seasonal growth of plants. You might want to compare with your answer. 
and looking at it in terms of given a new information, putting this complex information in the given slot, we're assuming the reader already recognizes this. And then this forces us to say something new. Of course, the noun group has no verb, so we'd have put this noun group into a clause and say something new about these effects. All right, focusing on the noun group now and post modification. So in complex noun groups, such as in line five, there are often several levels of post modification. We have the effects of climate, but what about the climate? Ah, the effects of climate on the seasonal growth of plants. And what about the plants? How about plants that flourish in the Okanagan? So we have two different post modifiers there. One type of post modifier is a phrase, as we see here with a preposition and a noun group. And another type of post modifier for the noun is a clause, which includes a pronoun such as that, which, where, plus a verb, for example, that flourish in the Okanagan. Of course, this one here, we made up this post modifier. There's one other type, that is a reduced relative clauses or reduced clauses. For example, we could reduce that flourish in the Okanagan to of plants flourishing in the Okanagan. There's another uh, version of plants native to the Okanagan, for example, which is a shortened form, as we see there. Now, for task 15, we'd like you to try to first identify the head noun in the noun groups below, and then look at the functions of the other modifiers in these noun groups. Pause the video here and try this out, please. Okay, and the answers to 15a, as you see from this table, uh, the head nouns are winter for noun group A and parts for noun group B. And in the table we see that in noun group A, Cana Canadian is a classifier, Canadian winter, and in noun group B, abiotic is a classifier of parts. So the next task becomes, what's the difference in function between a describer and a classifier? Pause the video here and give this some thought. Okay, as we see here, what's the difference between a describer and a classifier? A classifier classifies a thing within a set. In science, for example, part of the environment is either biotic or abiotic. The class of thing cannot be hedged uh, with a little bit biotic or boosted with a very abiotic. In contrast, a describer offers a less formal description which can be modified. Thus, it's possible to describe things as very long, extremely harsh, a very important part, and so forth. Keep in mind, however, that in academic writing, there's a tendency not to use a lot of booster words like very and extremely, even for describers. So this example shows the difference between describers and classifiers as pre-modifiers. Okay, now let's expand the noun group further. So we have the one we saw there above for task 17. Uh, now imagine you'd like to write more about the head noun effects. Add the two pieces of information shown below to the noun group. Add the information anywhere in the noun group that makes sense to you. The two pieces of information, unpredicted and long term. Pause the video here and please try this out. Okay, uh, before we answer 17, we'll follow it up. So which do you think is the best answer for task 17? Noun group number one, number two, or number three? Pause the video here and consider. Okay, to us, number two is the best version. It's balanced. So it has an appropriate balance between pre and post modification. Version number one is a bottom heavy noun group. It has too much post modification. And number three, in contrast, it is top-heavy with too much pre-modification. 
So we want to aim for balanced noun groups, but uh, do keep in mind that many appropriate noun groups have post-modification with no pre-modification or lots of pre-modification with no post-modification. It really is a question of where the noun group comes in the text and what it's doing there. Okay, let's practice packing information from one clause into a noun group. So please practice putting these clauses into one noun group. Pause the video here. Please try this out. Okay, children benefit from medical treatment can be packed into the benefits of medical treatment to children's growth rate, for example. Compare this with yours. Pause the video if you need to. Okay, and another one. Please try and pack this clause into a noun group. Pause the video here. Please try this out. Okay, so the speed of change in local food cultures increases with the establishment of global restaurant chains can be packed to the increasing rate of change in local food cultures associated with the establishment of global restaurant chains. Task 20 completes our experience of packing information from two clauses and a conjunction all the way to a noun group. We would like now to give you a chance to practice some of these operations of packing as well as unpacking. We're going to practice grammatical shifts and packing information from sentences. Read the sentences from a research paper in education psychology. Do you notice anything about these sentences? The style is perhaps a bit too concrete and the tone not very academic. This writing would be improved by being packed and we're going to show you how to do this with examples A and B. The task is to pack an idea from an existing form and meaning to a new form and meaning. To do this you'll have to change the whole sentence. So, for example, A, we see the verb understand. We would like you to pack this into a noun. And example B, we see a conjunction, when, and a clause. We use problem-solving transfer tests to pack this into an adverb phrase. And this is the result here. So, for example, A, we define meaningful learning as deep understanding of the material. In this sentence, deep understanding is a noun, a noun group, that is a packing of understands deeply. And example B, we can measure learning outcomes by using problem-solving transfer tests. In this clause, by using problem-solving transfer tests is a packing of when we use problem-solving transfer tests. So in the next task you will be doing operations of packing. Read the paragraph below. You'll probably notice that the style is a bit too concrete and the tone not very academic. So this also can be improved. As shown in previous examples, rewrite individual sentences in the paragraph by packing the underlined and numbered unit from its original grammatical form to the form shown on the right here, 1 to 4. So tasks 1, 2, and 3 here shift from a verb to a noun and 4 from a conjunction to a verb. Please try this out. Pause the video here. And here are some possible answers. For the first, when we learn to attend, we want this verb as a noun to pack it. So learning is achieved by attending to important aspects of the presented material. So number two is an extension of number one, a verb organizing to a noun. Learning is achieved by attending to important aspects of the presented material, organizing this material mentally, and then number three, integrating it with relevant existing knowledge. Number four, a conjunction to a verb, here in the original we have when, 
and we want this as a verb when it has a logical meaning. So we will use a verb such as reflect, which has a logical meaning. So number four can be packed as meaningful learning is reflected in the ability to apply what was taught to new situations. We encourage you to compare your answers with our answers here. And now moving on to task 22, where we will practice unpacking. So read the sentence below. You might sense that this sentence is a little bit overpacked. It might be too abstract for some readers, so it needs to be unpacked. And here is an example of how we would unpack it. So the verb leading, we want to unpack it into a conjunction and clause. And this might look like, meaningful learning is reflected in the ability to apply the taught material to new situations. So, is the conjunction, learning outcomes can be measured by using problem-solving transfer tests. So this is the example of unpacking a verb into a conjunction and clause. Let's move on to the task 22 self. And again, you might find that this sentence here from reading it, the quality of meaningful learning is severely limited by the learner's capacity for mental processing. So for some readers, this may be too abstract and packed, especially for example, in a section of writing that calls for more detail or more unpacking of the thinking process that the writer goes through. So the task is to rewrite the meaning into two or more sentences. To do this, unpack the underlined and numbered unit from its original grammatical form to the form shown on the right. So we have a verb to a conjunction and clause, a head noun to a verb, and a noun group to the verb as shown in the example. Please pause the video here and try this task out. And here are the answers to task 22. We have number one, a verb is limited and we want this as a conjunction and clause. And this can unpack, for example, to because, and this is the conjunction, because the learner is able to process mentally only a limited amount of material, the quality of meaningful learning is severely limited. And number two is a head noun to a verb, and number three, a noun group to a verb. So in number two, we had capacity, in the original and mental processing for number three in the original. And both of these combined in one sentence that is packed can be in fact the same as the previous sentence. Because the learner is able to process mentally only a limited amount of material, the quality of meaningful learning is severely limited. In this case, capacity is unpacked to is able to and process mentally is the unpacking of mental processing in the original. So there are some examples of unpacking information. This brings us to the end of our video tutorial on academic writing, practicing packing and unpacking to achieve tone and flow through shifts in abstract and concrete expression in academic writing. In this video tutorial, we've learned that in academic writing, there are waves of concrete and abstract expression, that both concrete and abstract e expression are necessary. And we've looked at the uses of concrete and abstract expression. For example, 
uh, abstract expression for previewing information in topic sentences, reviewing information in um, closing sentences, concrete expression for providing details and supporting evidence, uh, abstract expression for classification and definition. And we've looked at many shifts from concrete to abstract expression. We focused on concrete to abstract because that's what most students need to practice more and become more aware of. Keep in mind, uh, some writers write too abstractly and their writing is in need of unpacking. You'll have to judge, again, by what you want to mean. We looked at uh, given and new information order in the clause and uh, how that relates to abstract expression in particular. Often we have an interest in packing information, especially in the given position of the clause, and that is often in context of a noun group, so how to pack information in a noun group. And often students are quite challenged in this, students who recognize that so much information is expressed abstractly in academic writing, but are not practiced at correctly forming the noun group so that it expresses what they wish to mean. In particular, identifying the head noun as the core of knowledge that they wish to communicate. And there have been numerous opportunities for practicing packing and some opportunities for practicing unpacking information. And that brings us to the end of this video tutorial. Happy writing!